Okay, so in our first section, we'll start out just by looking at um, rectangular coordinates. And really, we're going to focus on two simple formulas you've probably done before, um, distance formula and midpoint formula. But distance formula is good because it has square roots in it, and that's the topic I really want to look at closely. Because square roots are going to pop up um, pretty much all year long. Okay, so we've got to know how to work with them. Right, so in our distance formula, the, generally the way they do it is they give you two points. I'm going to call those points A and B. And point A has the coordinate x1, y1. Point B is x2, y2. It's just gen generic coordinates. And I've drawn it out down below. Now this would apply if I put the points in any quadrant, but visually, to keep it simple, I'm going to put it in quadrant one. And the goal of the distance formula is to figure out basically how far apart these two points are. Okay, so some of you might have the distance formula memorized okay, off the top of your head. If not, that's fine. But does anybody know what formula the distance formula comes from? Distance formula isn't really its own formula. It's another formula that we use a lot more often. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at the picture and see if we can, um, we can figure this out. Right, I want to find the length of this segment. Okay. But to find the length of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a shape. And this segment will be one of the sides. Okay, so we're in trigonometry. Any um, guess what shape I'm going to make out of that segment? A right triangle. Yeah, I'm going to make a right triangle out of it. Okay, And specifically, I'm going to do it just like this. There's the bottom. And that's the height. Okay, so I just created a right triangle. Can you remind me what that is, Connor? That right there. That right there. All right. What makes that right there a right triangle? Oh, the um, angle. What about that angle? It's 90 degrees. Perfect. So we got a 90 degree angle right there. All right. Let's start with the, the base, okay, the side that's in red. I want to find the length of it. Now that should be pretty easy because it's, it's horizontal. Okay. Anybody tell me where that red segment starts? Looking at that picture, what's the value where that segment starts? And it's not a number. It's, it's going to be a, a letter with a, with a subscript. Yeah? Y1. Y1. OK, so it has a height. Go up y1. How about how far to the right did you go? X1. Yeah, x1. All right. So since this segment goes horizontal, does that have to do with x values when you go horizontal or y values? Well, Eric, what do you think? Does horizontal have to do with x's or y's? X's. Right. So I'm going to focus on this x1. Okay, I really don't care too much about the height, which is y1. I care about how far left and right, the x1. Now, how, where does that segment stop? It's not labeled directly in the picture, but, but it is labeled kind of indirectly. How far to the right does this segment go? Okay. Yeah, let me try to learn some names. Um, Jesenia? X2. Yeah, it goes all the way over to X2, and then it stops. So if we know where something starts and where something stops, what do you do with those two things to find out how far apart they are? Uh, 
Think of like on a number line. If you were here, and then you were here, and you wanted to know how far it was between those two values, what would you do? Yeah, um, Brian? Yeah, you just subtract them. And because I want to make sure this is a length, I want it to come out positive, what symbols can we put around that to make sure that's always a positive number? John? What can we put around that? Um, all right, you're on the right track. It's, it's a symbol like that, but parentheses won't make sure it's always positive. Yep, uh, Sam? Absolute value. Yeah, absolute value. All right, so if x1 was at 1 and x2 was at 8, all we have to do is subtract 1 minus 8 and make sure we make it positive. And that's the distance between those two points. All right, so we know the length of the base. And now some people write it like this. Would that come out the same? Yeah. When you subtract, if you put absolute values around it, it doesn't matter how you subtract. Do 4 minus 5 and then take the absolute value. Do 5 minus 4 and then take the absolute value. Comes out the same. Okay, either way. And let's do the height. And I'll do that one in green. Anybody have a guess what the formula for the height is going to be? It's going to be something minus something, but we're not going to focus on the x's now because we're looking at vertical. We want the distance from that y value to that y value. Dan? Okay, we're going to focus on y1 and y2, and what do you think you're going to do with the two of them? Subtract them just like we did before. So y1 minus y2. Or if you do y2 minus y1, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's like measuring the distance from here to Lemonster and then from Lemonster to here. It's the same thing, just measuring, just starting from a different spot. All right, now the kind of the important question. I have a right triangle. I know how long this side is. I know how long this side is using the two formulas we just came up with. How could I get the third side of this triangle? That's what I really want to know, the distance between points A and B. Is there any formula that if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can get the third one automatically? Yeah, Dan? Right, the Pythagorean theorem. And that's what the distance formula is. All it is is the Pythagorean theorem. Can you tell me, Dan, what, what's the Pythagorean theorem? Um, squared okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, can you explain what, what does that mean? Because I don't really have any of these sides labeled as a, b, and c. What, what's a, b, and c? Okay, so if we had a right triangle. Yep. So A and B are your two legs, and C is your hypotenuse. So he said A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that's the Pythagorean theorem. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this okay, for A, and I'll fill in this for B. Okay? And I already have those formulas right here. So I'm going to do, I want to make sure I do it exactly the way the book does. I'm going to fill in using that one and that one. Okay, so the length of the bottom side is x2 minus x1. <coughs> and Dan, what did you say to do with that? I, I have to take the length of the side and do what with it? Yeah, exactly. I've got to square it. 
So that's like my a squared. Now I need the length of the other side squared, y2 minus y1. Okay, that's, my, that's my height. Again, I have to square it. And that's equal to, in our case, I don't really have side C. I guess I would just call it segment AB. Okay, it's the length of segment AB. So one side squared plus the other leg squared equals the length of AB squared. And does anybody remember what we call this? This is the longest side in the triangle. John? Yeah, it's the hypotenuse. So that right there, that's your distance formula. That's basically it. Okay, the only thing you might see it rewritten in the book is instead of saying the length of AB or the distance from A to B, they like to take and get rid of this exponent. And the way you do that is you take the square root of each side. And what that'll do is get rid of the exponent. Okay, so there's your distance formula. It's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. But if you ever forget it, just remember, it's, only the, it's just the Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. All right, so let's see if we can find uh, the distance between these two points. Okay. Sometimes what I do, if, if you get confused what number is going to go where, just label them. Okay. Each coordinate has an x and a y. Call that one x1, y1. And call that one x2, y2. So, Brianna, if I'm going to plug into my formula, what's, um, what's going to be in that first set of parentheses? What minus what? It's going to be 4 minus 3, 4, 3 minus 3, right? Yeah, really, you could do it either way. Um, you're going to get the same answer. I'll just follow the formula. So, I'm going to do. 3 minus 4 plus, and Katrina, in my second set of parentheses, what will I put there? Um, 2 minus 5. Yep, 2 minus 5. If you did 5 minus 2, you're going to get the same thing because you're going to square it. And once you square it, if there was a negative in there, the negative is going to go away anyway. That's why you don't need to even worry about absolute value anymore. Squaring something makes it positive all the time. Um, so how about Nick? What's um, 3 minus 4? 1. Negative 1. Yep. Negative 1, and then when I square it? 1. There you go. 1. And how about uh, Nolan? 2 minus 5? Negative 3. And square it? Nine. Yep. We get 9. So the answer here is square root of 10. Unless they ask for a decimal, leave it just like that. That's fine. Any questions on that one? All right, now, square root of 10, um, is that anything that can be simplified? What do you think? No, there's nothing I can really do with square root 10. Okay. Let me show you a problem where we're going to get an answer, and there is something we can do with it. Okay. Let's find the distance between these two points. So I just basically wrote down the whole formula. Now I'm just going to fill the numbers in where they go. Um, Shane, can you tell me what's going to go in the first set of parentheses? 4 minus 2. Perfect. 4 minus 2. And Rebecca, in the second set? Uh, 10 minus 6. 10 minus 6. Perfect. 
So when I do this, 4 minus 2 is 2. Squared gives me 4. 10 minus 6 gives me 4. Squared is 16. So I get square root of 20. Okay. But as I said earlier, square root of 20, you can, you can make that smaller. And this is really the important part of the lesson. I want you to make sure you know how to reduce the square root. Does anybody know what that's going to reduce to? Yep, 2 square root 5. Okay. And if you're not sure, how did you get that? There's many different ways to reduce it. Generally, the way I do it is I try to think of two numbers that multiply to give me 20. And one of them I can take the square root of very nicely. Anybody think of two numbers that multiply to give me 20? OK, 10 and 2. What else? Yeah, I like 5 and 4 because 4 has a nice square root. So I like to break that square root up into just like that. Okay, break it up into two square roots multiplied together. And one of them has to be something you can take the square root of nicely. And the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, and there's other ways to do it as well. But that's, that's one way to do it. Okay, so basically to simplify square roots, you want to factor it. Okay, like I factored the number 20 into 4 times 5. And you have to factor it so that you have a product of two numbers. And one of the numbers has to be a perfect square. Okay, so perfect squares. What kind of numbers are perfect squares? So we got 4. What else? 9, 16, 25, 36. All numbers you can take the square root of. And then we put it as two square roots, and one of them you'll be able to simplify. The other one, you will not. So we already simplified square root 20. Um, let's try simplifying the square root of 48. Anybody think of two numbers that multiply to give me 48? And one of them you can take the square root of in your head nicely. John? I like 16, but 16 times 4, that would be 64. Yeah, 3. OK, so you could break that up into square root of 16 times square root of 3. Now, what's the square root of 16, John? Now, is anybody thinking of a different way to break up 48 besides 16 times 3? Well, can anybody think of a different way besides 16 and 3? Maybe some another number that we might have just used in the last problem? Yeah? Yeah, you can definitely use 4 and 12. Watch what happens if you do it that way. 4 and 12. Square root of 4 is 2. How come I got a different answer? What's going on with, with this? Yeah, because we didn't pick the biggest number we could have to start, which really was 16, we have to break it down again. How can I break up the number 12? Yep, we can write it as 4 times 3. And now when you take the square root of 4 again, you get another 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 3. So it's not wrong if you don't start out with the biggest number. You'll eventually get to the same answer. It just takes a few more steps. I like the way John did it because he found the biggest number right away. We're done quicker. But both ways will work. Any questions on that? Okay, so in the homework, I'll have you um, practice a, a couple of those. Okay, and the last formula we'll look at. This formula is actually a little bit easier than the distance formula because there's no square roots in it. It's called the midpoint formula. 
Okay? And it's exactly what it says. If you've got two points, it gives you the point that's exactly halfway between the two. Now, if I was just thinking about this with numbers. Okay, let's say I had the number 70 and the number 90. And I wanted to know what's exactly halfway between those two numbers. How would I do it? I had two numbers, and I wanted to know what's exactly halfway between them. Yes, uh, Karen? No, Paige, sorry. Add them and then divide by two. Yeah, you add them and divide by two. Uh, so what is that called when you add up two numbers and divide by two? We actually have a name for that. Yeah? The average. It's the average. That's all that the midpoint formula is. It's two averages. Add up the x's and divide by 2. That gives you the average x value. Add up the y's and divide by 2. That's the average y value. And this will be our last example we look at. So example five, they're giving you the same information as they did in the previous examples. You have two coordinates, but the directions are different. Okay, this time the directions do not ask for the distance. They ask for the midpoint. Okay, so you don't have to do it this way, but what I like to do is just set up the template for the formula where everything's going to go, and then I just fill in all the numbers. All right, so Skyler, what's, um, what's x1 here? Three. Three? So it's x1. So that means what has to be x2 now? Seven. Yep. Okay, and then uh, Connor, what's y1? Four. And Sam, what's Y2? Thirteen. Okay, what's nice is you're only dividing by two, so the worst fraction you're ever going to get or decimal is a 0.5. Okay, the arithmetic with this is always pretty easy. So what would be the coordinates of my midpoint? It would be 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. 4 plus 13 is 17, and half of 17. I mean, you could leave it like that. Half of 17, or do it as a decimal. I'd accept either, either answer. Okay. Any question on the midpoint formula? Okay, so what's the difference between... Um, the type of answer that I got here and the type of answer that I got when we did a distance problem. What's, what's the difference? Yeah. What's that? OK, so we are we're dividing here. We didn't have to do any division with distance formula. What about the, the type of answer that I get? Yeah, Kyle? Right. This answer is a coordinate. Okay? It's a location on a graph somewhere. Okay? The type of answers we got before were lengths. Okay? It was how long is something. Okay? So two different, two different kinds of answers. All right. So um, first homework tonight will be uh, in the book. Okay, on page 7. I'd like you to try 15 to 21, just the odds. 39 to 43, just the odds. First part is distance, second part is midpoint. And copy down these four problems that say simplify. I'd like you to simplify square root 40, 
square root 28, square root 108, and square root of 1,440. Okay, I'll take a look at that first thing tomorrow. And then we'll start our last section for this week, which is section 2.1. And we're going to do that section over the next two days.